Hi, this is Tanner with Seed Code, and I'd like to talk about customizing the visual style of Dayback. We've actually set this up pretty nicely. Uh, we've given full access to CSS overrides in the calendar. And if we go to the calendar developer folder here and down to web viewer under the hood, uh, you can see we have a couple of built in themes. So it's going to default to the default theme, but you could actually pick another theme we included called the light theme. So if we activate that, uh, we can go back to the calendar and check out those changes. So as you can see, the sidebar is much lighter. Uh, the text is still uh, white. Uh, all of our highlights and buttons are a little bit different. And uh, if we click on like a popover, still a white background, but different color buttons. So this kind of gives you an idea of the types of things you can customize. You can see the text colors are different and navigation is a little bit different color. Uh, but we can even go further than this, really. Uh, we, can, we can affect any element on the page um, that's been classed. And we've tried to class pretty much everything in the calendar. So what I want to do is activate the default theme, and we're going to edit that by clicking on the edit button next to it. Uh, we have everything very well labeled, so hopefully you can have, an, uh, you know, it's very quick to find what you're looking for. If we scroll down here, you can see we've got shared classes. Below that, we should have, I believe, the sidebar. Yeah, sidebar is coming up next. Uh, I believe we have the header below this, and it goes down. You know, we, we show uh, the event, and here's the mini calendars. Um, edit event popover. So everything's labeled very nicely. And we actually have a search box up here too that you can look uh, or type what you want to search for. So let's say you wanted to find, uh, you know, like the popover that we just saw, for example, you can just type in popover, hit return, it's going to find all instances of that word. Uh, so you may get uh, some hits up top, but we can just say find next until you see that uh, section comment above, uh, which we just saw right there, I just highlighted it. So edit edit event pop over right here, and then we can customize any styles in here uh, to match what we want. So most classes that we have in here are basically the color, background color, uh, the easy things to change, the things most people would want to change when, when changing the style. Uh, so we can look right here, we've got, for example, a default button style, a uh, little note about where that might be used, primary button style, uh, a little note about where that might be used. So we can experiment with this if we want to. I could type in a new color here, for example. So our primary button, which is blue, uh, maybe we want to change that to a little more uh, red. So we can say 10, 50. I don't really know exactly what color that's going to look like. Uh, but once we've typed that in, we can say preview and calendar. It's going to open up a little mini window, and we can preview our changes here. Now these are uh, legitimate events, so anything that we change here will affect the calendar. So make sure that uh, if you don't intend to uh, edit any events, don't. Uh, but we can look through here and see what that change did. So for example, here's our primary button. Uh, over here in settings, here's another primary button. And you can see that those changed to red. Uh, now the hover color is still the same. So we may want to edit that hover color. So if we come down here, we have uh, button primary hover. And uh, here's our background color. Uh, one thing to note on CSS is the color is the text color, and then background or background color uh, is the background color. So we can edit this maybe to match the red a little bit more. So let's say we want 250, 10, 50. And then we can preview this change to see what happened there. So now when I hover over, you can see just a very subtle change there uh, with the red. So we can go through all the elements like this and style them. If we wanted to come over to the sidebar, for example, I could come over to the sidebar. We have a gradient by default. So we have all these background color gradients uh, that support different web browsers. Uh, what we would probably do if we wanted to make this a solid color rather than a gradient, so we could remove uh, all those additional uh, items there in, in this class, and we can just put a new color in here. So we could say, uh, we want this to be 225, 225, 225. And then one thing to note too, all of our colors are in the RGB or RG, RGBA format. So if we wanted to add an alpha transparency, we could do that. We could just put an A here at the end of RGB, and then it just takes another comma and whatever our value is between zero and one. So if we wanted to make this a little bit transparent, we could add that in, that 0 0.5 there. And then we can preview this in the calendar. And you can see that now our background is that light gray and it's got a 50% transparency.
our color, our color of the button is still exactly the same. So that's changing colors. Uh, you know, we go through with whatever you want to customize, play around, edit the colors, uh, and uh, hopefully this gets you where you want to go. Uh, a couple points uh, here that we haven't covered. If we scroll down a little bit, um, here we go. So uh, we have our column headers, and you can see we've got some different things that we're targeting. So today, for example, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we can actually colorize uh, the, the days themselves. So let me go down here. So these are the headers. Uh, let me just show you here. We'll, 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 I'll make a change and, and show you. So let's go over to uh, these guys here. These are the actual columns, the actual columns uh, of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. So let's say we wanted to always make Sunday uh, stand out a little bit. So what we can say is let's change the background color and we want this to be uh, RGBA and let's make it 220, 220, 220. So maybe a little bit gray. And then we're gonna give this a very, because we're doing RGBA, we're gonna make this very transparent. And actually let's, let's make this a little more red maybe. So let's do 244. And then we can preview this. And you can see now on Sunday, uh, we get a nice light kind of highlight there. So you may want to colorize this to, to indicate that it's blocked out. You may want to colorize it to indicate that this is an important day. Uh, it's up to you, but I just wanted to point out that you can colorize these columns. So we have two sections there you saw. We had the, the header, the column header, and that's this section here. So if you wanted to make the text up here a different color, you could use the CSS color command. If you wanted to make the background color match the column, you could do that. Uh, but we've separated the header from the column itself. So I just wanted to point that out. And then one other thing you might want to change is the font. We use a uh, default, so if we go back to the calendar here, uh, our default font is Helvetica, and that matches our FileMaker layouts in this file. Uh, but if you're embedding this in your calendar, you may want to change that uh, if you if you want to take the time to change all of our layouts to whatever font matches your system. Uh, but we can do that pretty easily here in CSS for our web viewer. Uh, up at the top, what I might do is just put in a body tag, and that will target the body, which is essentially the whole thing. And then we can say font uh, family. And let's say we wanted to do Tahoma, for example. We can say Tahoma. And then maybe we want to default, if, if the user doesn't have Tahoma, maybe we want to use Helvetica. And then maybe if they don't have Helvetica, we could just say generic uh, sans serif font, or serif if you're using like Times or something like that. Uh, so we go to Tahoma, Helvetica, sans serif. So it's going to go down that list looking for that font. So let's preview that change. And you can see that that applied that font change over the whole calendar here. Uh, so very, very easy to change that font. If we, if we click on one of these events here, uh, the font has all been changed uh, throughout the calendar. Uh, I can't think of a quicker way to do this. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing you might want to do too, you know, we're using FileMaker here as our editor, but there's some great text editors out here. So you may want to, uh, we can just do uh, Sublime, for example, is one I use. So we may want to go over to FileMaker and uh, we may want to copy all this text, go back to Sublime and paste it in. Uh, and we can edit the text here in, in Sublime. Uh, so I may even want to save this to my desktop, for example, and uh, I can name it default theme. And I'll, actually, I'll do, we'll do a real CSS file here, default theme.css. And what this is going to do is colorize the CSS so we get a little more hinting capabilities here, which is really nice. The comments stand out really well. Uh, the classes stand out really well from, from the properties on those classes. It's fully searchable. So if I want to type in sidebar, I can find sidebar very quickly. Uh, if I wanted to do uh, multiple edits of something, so let's say I wanted to change anything that said danger. Let's uh, highlight danger here. On the Mac, I could hit Apple D on Windows, Control D. I could find every instance of the word danger, for example, and uh, we can just type in something else like um, uh, help or something like that. So we can make changes really quickly. Now, we won't want to change the classes in this case because uh, <laughs> they wouldn't match what Dayback is looking for. But for example, if you wanted to change every color, so let's undo that change. Let's say we had this color appear in multiple places. Uh, we could do the same thing 
and we could change all these colors to RGB, uh, you know, 10, 10, 10, or something along those lines. And then when we're done, we can copy this whole thing, go back into FileMaker, and paste our changes. So once we've got everything working the way we want, we can actually save this as a new theme, which you might want to do rather than just save the theme in place uh, if this is the first time you're saving it. So I can say that this theme name is, is me, it's Tanner. And uh, so you see here, this got added and automatically activated. So now if we go to the calendar, uh, this theme we're making uh, shows up as, as we've made it. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully this gives you some insight into how we can change the, the look and feel of the calendar. Obviously, I'm not really going through and adding good colors here, uh, but pretty powerful. You can have as many themes as you want. So, as, and, and in fact, it extends past this, but we've only visually shown uh, 10 slots here. So if you go beyond 10, you may have to edit this layout to show those. Uh, we, can, we can manage them easily. So if I activate a new one, we can delete that theme that we just created or we can edit this theme that we just created further. Um, but uh, I think the sky's the limit here, really. If you know CSS, you can pretty much uh, modify any style of, of any, ed any element that's on the calendar. So good luck, and uh, we'd love to see your themes, and uh, maybe we can even include them in future versions of Dayback. Thank you.